what do you think it will take for your congregation to continue to thrive and grow 20, 30, 50 years from now? We've got to get some young people. Okay. Um, right now, the average age of the person in my congregation is over 65 years wow. old. Wow. Okay. And if we don't get some young people, once they pass off the scene, there's nobody. There is. Yeah. And do you think there being a generational gap, like, between old folks and young folks is a part of the problem? Or do you think the problem is just there are not enough young people around here in this area? Well, here's what I think. At one time, this place was thriving with young people. What has happened, those that have left, they have not come back. Mm -hmm. They will come back and visit. But I've had, yeah, yeah, but they're not coming back here to stay, yeah. to live. I mean, because they see what you and I see. It's funny that you say that. I'm looking at my friend over here who is the director of a program called State. <laughs> okay. Which is all about getting young people to stay mm -hmm. in Appalachia. Okay. <laughs> As okay. you say that, uh, uh, he lives right over there. So okay. I see him in his yard. But, but you know, um, you know, that's interesting. And I'm glad that there are programs like State and there are programs like the Appalachian uh Media Institute okay. through Apple Shop that are working with young people from this region and that are helping them to build on the skills that they have so that they can be resources yeah. and actually yeah. stay here in this area. Because yeah. I think that's one of the, yeah, the because things you that gotta, we have to do. You got to have a reason for them to stay. You got to have a reason for them to stay. Mm -hmm. And and what I've seen noticed also, once young people have left this part of the country and left and saw there's a whole big old world out there other than here. Yes. They like what they see. They get a taste of it. And they're looking like, okay, I got this big old world out here. Why would I want to come back to Southwest Virginia? Right. Where it's, everything is compact. There's limited opportunity. And for me, it's the exact opposite because I think one of the things in my life I struggled with was just the fact that our economic system of capitalism and how mm -hmm. it works. But one of the benefits of capitalism, that it's about finding a market and creating right. markets right. where they don't exist. Mm -hmm. There is so much opportunity for that. And I think that we have to be able to be positive mm -hmm. and see opportunities. Yeah. The reason yeah. I live here is because there ain't all that <laughs> stuff. And yeah. I get mad every time I think, ooh, I could do this business, and then somebody else does it yeah. because that now that's a yeah. lack of opportunity. Mm -hmm. And I'm saying, huh, but there's so many things. But, but my mind is able to be creative, and I come up with good ideas all the time right. <laughs> yeah. for things that we can do. Now, it, do you think that would be great to, like, be able to, like, hone in on that with, with like, our young folks yeah. and stuff for the future? Yeah, and we've got to sit down and talk to them. Sure. You know, that's, that's something else that um, – we don't, I don't think we sit down and talk to them enough to find out what's on your mind. I mean, and, and not, and I think we have to be careful that we don't make them feel like we're being nosy. Like, you know, who you talking to? Where you going? But, yeah, <laughs> you know. Although you probably need to know those things. Yeah, today. you know, <laughs> but just like, what's on your mind? You know, what, what is, just like, what are some of the thoughts that you have, you mm -hmm. know? Um, what would you like as a young person? What would you like to see? Because you've got to, but the one thing you've got to do is make them feel comfortable and let them know, you know, just by talk, it's not going to be used against you. Yeah. You're not going to be judged. Mm -hmm. But just, let's just have the conversation. Let's have a conversation. And I think one conversation will lead to, they'll they'll be like, you know what, that was that was pretty good. And you know, yeah, I, I, I wouldn't mind sitting down and talk, talking again, but you got to have the conversation. And I don't think that's taking place. Right. See, and that's the thing that I see. There are a few young people that's around my age, and we are very active in our church. We go to Pastor Sandra's church. Okay. Sandra and more Jones. of my friends have been showing up to Pastor Sandra's church. I have not invited anybody to okay. come, but they've been showing up okay. Okay. <laughs> because they know that's where I go to church. Okay. And I guess they see something that they want. <laughs> yeah. Well, people want to, I think young people, 
they want to be a part of something. Mm -hmm. They want to feel like they belong. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and of course, the black church has been always been someplace where they say everybody's somebody mm -hmm. that you can come to the black church. And, you know, even if your biological mother is passed on, there's always a mother, some mother in the church will put her arm around you um, and embrace you, you know, as their own, as their own child. So, um, again, it, it, it's just feeling like, you know, being connected, being a part of something that's good and positive and not just, you know, and I think we have to be careful that when it comes to church, people show up on Sunday, okay, but I want them to know that I care about you Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, not just because I see you on Sunday. I'm concerned about what goes on in your life during the week because I tell Chestnut Grove, sometimes you can't wait to Sunday yeah. because stuff. if your mother dies, your brother dies, yeah. or you have to go to the hospital mm -hmm. for emergency surgery on a Thursday, well, you can't wait to Sunday. Yeah. So, you know, I think we have to be conscious that things happen all the time. Yeah. And so when you get to church on Sunday, I want that to be an experience that all I've been through the whole week, this is some place I can come. Mm -hmm. Fellowship. Yes. See see my fellow church members. Mm -hmm. Have a smile. Somebody's gonna hug you. Yeah. Somebody's gonna shake. Somebody's just gonna even say, Hey, how you doing? Because I'm always with that might be the only time during the week that somebody's even said, Hey, how you doing today? I think that it has either been forgotten mm -hmm. or just not recognized by younger folks that that's really the whole purpose of church. That's the purpose of is church. Is that especially throughout this pandemic, mm -hmm. many of the young folks have felt isolated yeah and older folks too oh yeah yeah we know about the invisibleness with like senior citizens and stuff like that in this country that's a real thing yeah and many of the old folks that come to church are coming to church because that's the only that's time the only time that they get to be yeah. around people because when we were closed i got a call just about every every week Reverend came when we coming back to church yeah because that it that's the one thing on sunday they look forward to I can, I'm going to get dressed up yep. and I'm going to church. It gives me purpose. That's a big thing. There is a lot of church hurt. A lot of people who don't go to church because it, yeah. have been hurt <laughs> by members <laughs> of the church. Yes. And things. Yes. yes. And I think that one of the things that we have forgotten, even, even, when, even when those things were happening mm -hmm. to them, somebody forgot that the reason why, because I think you did a really good job of just laying that out there. Mm-hmm. This is where we come to fellowship. Yeah, yeah. And I got to preach a sermon one time. I think the first sermon that I preached was about the church being a hospital. And I talked about the purpose was wellness. And I spelled out the word well. Um, and it was the W stood for worship. Mm -hmm. The E stood for evangelize. The L stood for well, it was really it's two L's, but I came up with three of them, okay. and I say they, they all go together. But listen and love because and learn. Okay. So the thing is that if you love somebody, you'll listen to them. Mm -hmm. and if you listen long enough, you learn something. Yeah. So those all go together. I think that that's what the purpose of the church should be restored to. Yeah. Do because, you feel the same? Yeah. Feel exactly. Similar? Exactly because. There, there are people to this day that, um, like you said, won't come to church because somebody said something 10 years ago to hurt their feelings. Yes. And they're still harboring that hurt. And sometimes you hear, well, such, 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 they, as long as such, such is in going to that church, they'll never come back because they hurt my feelings and, and they never apologize and stuff like that. We got to get we got to get beyond that. We do. Somebody's got to be the bigger yeah. person. Yeah, because people are dying. People are dying at an alarming rate, and my biggest fear is that somebody's going to die and not apologize to somebody before they die. Yeah. And I, I you don't want to die with that on your conscience. Mm -hmm. And so you know, like you say, at some point, somebody has to be be the bigger person 
and say, you know what? I'm sorry. You know, I, I if I hurt your feelings, and let's move let's move past that because people's souls are at stake, and we and I and I use this word. We got to get beyond the pettiness. Yes. You know, we got to get beyond the, and and, and I, I I said this. If you want your feelings hurt, come to church. Uh, I hear that, brother. <laughs> yeah, if you want your feelings, if you want to mis be mistreated, come to church. But at the same time, I, I've said this in Chestnut Grove, you got to develop some thick skin. Mm -hmm. And if somebody hurt your feelings, say, okay, but we'll just keep it moving. You know, because it happens. And, you know, and church is supposed to be the place for love and stuff like that. But like I constantly remind them, if you ever want to get your feelings rudely and badly hurt, come to church and just sit on the pew. Mm -hmm. And just sit there and say, I say sometimes you don't even have to say a word or at the church because people, especially church people, are vicious. Yes. Oh, oh. <laughs> they are, yes. vicious. They are yes. vicious. Yes. And they will say hallelujah one moment, got their hands up. Mm -hmm. But when you walk out the door, that same person will cuss you out. That's true. Before you get out out of the parking lot, they will curse you out. So you you just got to know that everybody that comes to church does not come for praise and worship. That's true. You know, people come with their own personal agenda. They come for for clout. For clout. They come just to come <laughs> yeah. because it's oh it's Sunday. I'm supposed to go to church. Everybody does not come to church for praise, and I'm very aware of that. Yes, very aware of that because. You know, it, it, it's like, well, I'm going and I'm just going to see who shows up. I'm going because I got a new dress. I got a new suit. And I want to wear my new dress and my new suit. And I want people to see me. I mean, and I've said this. If that's why you come, I'd rather you not come. I hear that. <laughs> yeah. Just <laughs> just, just, stay, just stay home. We, we'll see you another time. But I always tell Chestnut Grove, if you, when you walk through that door, if you have not come to hear the word of God, don't come. Because mm -hmm. that's what we're here for. Exactly. We're not here for entertainment. I'm not here to be your best friend. I say, I love you all, but I came to give you all the word of God. And if I fail to do that, God holds me accountable. That's I got to answer to him. Not y'all. I said, so we have to have this understanding that, you know, sure, I want y'all to come. But if it's going to be foolishness. If you come in here mad and stuff like that, hey, how you doing? Uh, hey, what's going oh, on? Uh, I just just come, uh, we're doing like a stay event, like um, a little cookout later. Awesome. Just tell him uh, come through if he wants to. He's so busy. Um, You're here, hearing right? the voice of Micaiah Davis, uh, who is a coordinator over the the state project. Oh no, perfectly, perfectly. I was just talking. This is Reverend Leroy Kane, and I was I saw you and I was mentioning. That you were over there, he was just talking yeah. He was about, talking about you. <laughs> he was just saying how young people we need to get young people to stay. And I saw you, and I said, "Well, there's my buddy." So I'm just tying it all together. So I see you right here. That's cool. All right, all right. good well, to see. You. Actually, I did want to tell you, uh, Reverend Kane. You know, this has been a very good, uh, lengthy, and full interview. Now, I was wondering if you would be willing to continue this on maybe another Saturday. Absolutely. Maybe at the church. Absolutely. And then we Just can let maybe get into some specifics okay. of maybe like the design of the church and that kind of stuff. Yeah, you're welcome you to come and look around, whatever you need to do. Just but, let me know. Well, thank you very much, sir. Yeah. I think that we have a lot of good information Okay. Here. So okay. thank you It's very been much. a pleasure. Yes, sir. The pleasure has been mine, too. Let's see.